Welcome to the second week of our series, Needy. And last week we began by saying, Spirituality 101 is this. There is a God, and it's not you. There is a creator, and we are the created. And as the created, that means we have needs. And spiritual maturity means meeting those needs in legitimate and healthy ways, being honest about our needs, so that ultimately we can love our neighbor as we love ourselves. And that's the key part, that our ability to love our neighbor and love the people around us will, will fall to our ability to really love and care for ourselves. So in the next few weeks, we're going to look at some of our needs. We're not going to get to all of our needs, but we're going to look at some of the ways we need to make sure we are caring for ourselves. And so today, we want to look at our need for God. And our need for God is our greatest need. Uh, The human person is meant to run on God the way a car runs on gasoline. And now that sounds like the pious thing to say in church, doesn't it? I mean, it sounds like what else are we going to say in church? Yes, you need God. And yet if we're kind of honest with ourselves, or at least if I'm honest with myself, when I wake up in the morning, that's not my first thought. Usually my first thought is, hey, I got to run to the, to the bathroom. That's what kind of drives me out of bed. Or I got to get up and get my day moving so I can get to work on time. Or I got to get up and I need coffee. I just need, um, the coffee's calling so, so I can get my, my brain moving and thinking. You know, when we wake up, it's not always our first thought. And yet, the, the greatest need we have is for God. And I think sometimes we struggle with our need for God or to recognize that need for, for, for a few different reasons. Number one, I think God's love and grace is almost like the sun. I mean, obviously we need the sun coming down on us, but we don't think about it. It's just rays are so strong, we experience it in some way, that it gives life and light to the planet. Well, I think when it comes to God, that we can be in, we can experience God's grace and God's, uh, in, in many ways, without directly looking for him. I think another reason why we're not always aware of our need from God is, is because of original sin and our, our sinful choices. And so we, we can, it, it obfuscates our need for God. And sometimes just the busyness of life can numb us for our need for God. We, we're so busy doing other things that like our need for God and like our need for other things, we're just not even thinking about it. And we get numb to it. But the reality is we have a God-shaped hole in us. As St. Augustine said, our hearts are restless until they rest in God. We need God. And without God and his grace and his love and his mercy, we wouldn't even exist. And we need to run on God, to be fueled by God. If we're to be the people God, God has created us to be, to be the people we want to be. So today, we want to look at, I want to just try to help um, grow that awareness in our hearts for God. And to do that, I want to look at a psalm from King David, a man who knew about his need for God. We're going to look at Psalm 63. Now, to give a little bit of background on the psalm, David writes this psalm while he's out in Judean desert. So it's going to help to make sense of some of the lines from the psalm. Also, it's, it takes place at a certain point in David's reign where his son Absalom has seized control. So David's kind of in exile. Uh, there's this fight between David and Absalom, this rift between them. It's, and it, it culminates in this all-out war, this civil war in Israel during David's reign. And so David actually winds up just leaving the city of Jerusalem and withdrawing to the Judean wilderness during, at this time. And so this is all going on. It gives David time to think. And here's what David writes in Psalm 63. O oh God, you are my God. That despite everything else that's going on, despite the loss of his kingdom, the, or potential loss of his kingdom, David just says, you know what, God, you are my God. God, you are most important to me. This does not matter whether I am in power or not does not matter as long as you are my God. He says, God, you are my God, so I seek you. My soul thirsts for you. My flesh faints for you, as in a dry and weary land where no water is. 
So David has his time to think, and he's like, God, he looks out to the desert land. He's like, God, my soul is thirsting for you in the same way this desert land thirsts for water. That God, without you, my soul is dry and weary. He says, God, I, 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 see, I need you. God, my flesh faints for you. Do you ever have time when you're away from friends or family that you, you love and you, your flesh faints for them? You, you want to hug them, you want to kiss them. You know, if you've been away from your spouse or your kids or again, other family members or friends where you just, you know, and maybe it's drawing closer to when you're gonna, they're going to come home or you're going to go home and you just can't wait to hug them. That's the way David feels about guys like, God, my flesh faints for you. He goes on, so I have looked upon you in the sanctuary, beholding your power and your glory. David thinks back, and he can't, to times he's been in the sanctuary, and that would have been a tent with the the Ark of the Covenant. That was the most palpable presence of God to the Israelites in that time. And, And David says, I've seen your power and your glory. I felt your presence in that time. And he's remembering that finally, of going to that place and experiencing God. He goes on, because your merciful love is better than life, my lips will praise you. David remembers these times, these moments he's had, where he's felt God's presence and he's, and he's felt God in his heart and his soul. And he's like, there's nothing in life that compares to that. So he says, I will praise you, God, for you're so good. So so I will bless you as long as I will live, and I will lift up my hands and call on your name. God, because relationship with you is better than anything else in my life, I'm going to lift up my hands and call on your name. Did you ever have that experience if you have younger kids or if you've seen this with with other little children when they see their parents or see someone uh, that that they like, and they, they come and they lift up their hands? David's like, God, I lift up my hands because I want you to hold me. I want to be in your presence. He says, my soul is feasted with marrow and fat, and my mouth praises you with joyful lips. David says, like, being with God and having these intimate times is like steak dinner for his soul. He says, when I think of you upon my bed and meditate on you in the watches in the night, For you have been my help, and in the shadow of your wings I sing for joy. David remembers that there is joy in being with God, that the greatest of joy is this time with him, because our hearts and our souls are meant to run on God. Now certainly every time of prayer is not going to be that time of of, of feasting or feel like those great joy. There's certainly times, dry times. But the more we have those times and experiences of feeling of of God meeting, coming into our heart and soul and acknowledging our need for God, the more times we spend with God in prayer, the more we're going to know of our need for God. So I think there's a couple takeaways from this passage that we can use in our own prayer life. Number one, that simply when you get up in the morning, confess your need to God. Be like, God, I need you. Father, I need you. Jesus, I need you. Spirit, I, I need you, God. And that's just awakening within our hearts and our souls what is already true and already there, that we do need God. And it's bringing it to mind and calling it to mind. Uh, there's a great song, that Matt Marr song, um, God, I Need You. It's be maybe a great song to play at the beginning of the day or, or to download from iTunes so that you have it. And once in a while you can just play that to start your day or play that on your ride to work. So number one, I think we can learn from David of how to awaken that need for God and be aware of it is number one, to just confess it. God, I need you. Number two, that we have special places where we go to meet God. Uh, and I think there's places that are ordinary routine and also places that are out of the ordinary. So for example, for me, I have a place on my couch where I go to pray. And I go there to meet God. And as you go to that place over and over again, it becomes a sacred space. Then also you need some other places where you can meet God. So for example, for me, the the ocean, the beach, is just something sacred about that space. I feel like I hear God speaking to me at the beach, at the ocean. 
And so once a year, at least once a year, I need to get to that place and have a kind of time of prayer where I hear God speaking to me. I have a, I have a friend who lets me use his house uh, near Annapolis, and that's another place that's a retreat place for me to come and meet with God. What are your ordinary and then out of the ordinary places where you come to meet God? Those are sacred spaces that are important to have to develop this intimacy with God. Another thing we learned from, from David is that, again, we need to praise God. And, and music is very helpful. He, our, if our prayer is always about what we need or what we want or praying for petitions, that's not going to help us to understand our real need for God. And so make sure as part of your prayer there is praising of God. And finally, I think we learn from David that posture matters. David says he lifts up his hands to praise God. And sometimes maybe we need to do that to listen to music and praise God. Sometimes we need to sit and just be still with God. Sometimes we need to get on our knees and humble ourselves before God. Sometimes we can go on prayer walks and we just talk to God while we walk. The whole point is that our posture is important. It can lend itself to our prayer and to understanding our need for God. My greatest need is for God. Your greatest need is for God. So God, we need you. So God, we will seek you. Let me pray. Father, we thank you for this psalm. We thank you for David's example. And God, we pray that you would awaken in our hearts and our souls our need for you. Help us to be aware of, God, how much we need you. And God, may we come to you on a regular basis. Come to you every day and throughout the day for your grace and your mercy and love because, God, we are so desperately in need of it. We make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen.